Hey everyone, Jordan here. You may remember we looked at the MSI Z890 Godlike a little while ago. Every now and again, it's nice to just look at something a bit crazy, even if we wouldn't personally buy it. Today is another one of those days. We've got the Aorus Z890 Aorus Extreme AI Top. This is another board that's going to come in at around £1,000 or $1,000, so obviously on the high end, but if you're doing high end workflows, creative productivity stuff, or maybe you want to look at something that's a little bit more uh, consumer friendly before you go to something like Threadripper, then this might be something you'd be looking at. Also, being the Core Ultra Series 2 with Z890, we've now got another year on that socket with the Arrow Lake refresh that will be coming somewhere. Uh, somewhere. Uh, so that obviously makes it a bit more palatable as if we were going to have one generation on this board it'd be a really hard sell so let's just get straight into the box we'll go over the accessories and then we'll look at the board afterwards so this seems to have moved a little bit in shipping but this is a little additional add-on fan that goes over the memory we'll obviously look at that in a bit more detail in a minute so underneath on the left we've got a documentation a very thick printed manual I do like to have a printed manual personally loads of different cables and things here looks like we've got some additional covers there's also some velcro cable ties a splitter from a proprietary to three fans that's quite nice then we'll probes another adapter there looks to be like front panel and usb and that kind of connector onto another proprietary one more thermal probes there we've also got another one of those fan splitters we've got another proprietary cable that's a four pin fan to then two usb ports that's quite nice then last but not least, we've got their Q Connects. So on the right hand side, we've got a USB DAC. So if you want a little bit of a higher end sound, that's something you can just easily connect in there, USB-C, just to a single 3.5 mil jack. This is a, another proprietary cable. This one though is gonna be proprietary into five RGB three pin headers. So we've also got some SATA cables, two packs in there, one of which is right angled. And then we've lastly got our Wi-Fi antennas. This is going to be Wi-Fi 7 on this model and also Bluetooth 5.4. So let's bring in this monster, oh, one absolute unit. So on this side, like I mentioned, we've got that RAM fan. There's just push pins on there that go to the board and then also magnets on the Mac. So it's really easy to just take off, put your memory in and then just pop that back on the top and it finds its own place. Pretty cool. Just zooming in to look at the power stages on this one, we've got a really beefy solution, 22 plus 1 plus 2. It's obviously going to take the highest end CPUs, obviously, ready for the Arrow Lake refresh as well. Screen going to be on the left hand side here. You can just about see the lighter part, obviously, where it's going to shine through when it's lit up. Otherwise, it is a mirror finish. Before we actually start looking around the board, just a quick flip over. We have got a big old back plate. There's also a protective peel on there, but I will be leaving that as this has got to be rotated after this one. Personally, I'm not a really big fan of back plates especially when you've mounted them in a case. A lot of them you generally don't see anyway, but some people do like them. So it is there if you are a fan. Now looking at the top, we've got our eight pin EPS cables. You might think, how are you going to connect those? But we've got another magnetic part just pops off. So you can connect those in, get the bends nice and tight, and then just pop that back on. Do like that. There's also a four pin header under there. And then we've got another two further on, CPU optional and CPU fan. Also have got a couple of probe points there too also in terms of the thickness this looks to be an eight layer pcb seems a little bit thicker than most so just thought i'd mention that for you guys that like to know about that and then on the right hand side here we've got some little options so you've got a clear cmos button power reset there's also some little bits that looks like they're going to pop up once it's actually powered we've also got an led readout on there which i love to see as well and on the right hand side we've got the three proprietary connectors that i mentioned 24 pin for power we also then got a, another proprietary one a bit further down. We've got a Type-C port coming straight out the board. Then if we go to the right angle, we've got a normal Type-C. Now I've seen this on quite a few Z890 boards this generation. I think it's for if you have a little screen inside your case, you can easily just plug the power straight into that rather than having to route it around the back of the case. So nice and easily accessible. We've also then got another Type-C port. Both of these are gonna be USB 3.2 Gen 2. A Type-A, USB 3.2 Gen 1. And we've also got four SATA 6 gigabit ports, but you can just take out, looks to be another probe sensor point there. And we've got another proprietary connector on there. That's for the USB fan extensions and RGB that I showed you in the box. So obviously a lot of proprietary connections on the side of the board, but that means where we traditionally have them running along the bottom, there aren't any on this one at all. It's just a nice clean face, which I really like. I think it looks really aesthetically pleasing compared to a lot of other boards on the market. Let me think about it down in the comments. And going back to the socket, of course, we've got our LGA1151 socket there. That's also the 
reinforced second gen socket for our series two processors. Then on the right of that, we've got our DIMM slots. This will support up to 256 gigabytes, up to 9,500 mega transfers per second, blazingly fast. That also may be improved by a BIOS update. So if you're watching this in six months time, you may find that is increased in megahertz and also capacity as well crazy numbers so going down to our expansion slots so the first one here is a massive chunky heat sink nice gold side on that as well we've got push pins on the underside that will then go to the board and also shine through with the rgb this little part in the gap there and also on the end which will shine through up to 110 mil gen 5 drive there and you've also got a nice little quick release for the m.2 drive as well now this big panel at the bottom this is also removable comes off in one big piece like so turning that around we've got another three 110 mil thermal pads magnet on the other side there as well and then support for another three 110 mil mvme drives the top one's going to be gen 4 off the cpu and then the other two are going to be gen 4 off the chipset i really like that configuration it's much like a lot of the asrock boards so you can use all of the lanes without your top graphics card slot suddenly drop into x8 the second you put another drive in the second one so a big fan of that layout in terms of our pci slots we've got two gen 5 the top one does have the quick release on there as well so when that's enabled like that we can just press that to release it nice little addition we've also then got another gen 5 below that the bottom one is wired to x8 though and the top one x16 lastly at the bottom an x4 that's going to be wide to x4 from the chipset perfectly good enough for though for a sound card or a capture card so onto the rear IO, we've got a q flush plus button at the top alongside an ignition one this is really cool if you've got a custom loop set up with this and you need to fill it you can press the ignition button which powers everything but the board so then you're not booting your whole system up you're just running what needs to be done to actually fill your loop which i think is a really cool button i've never seen that before so good bit of innovation there we've then got 10 usb a ports these are all usb 3.2 gen 2. we've got a line out microphone in sp diff there's also a dual 10 gig land i'd like to see that and we've also got two type c thunderbolt 5 ports very quick 80 gigabit ports there then finally we've got our quick connects for our wi-fi so that was a look at the z890 aorus extreme ai top absolutely mental motherboard um i don't know about you guys but every now and again i think it's nice to look at something just crazy high end just to see what was out there the godlike was one of those and obviously this is very much on the same page i love the magnetic ram cooler brings me back to the old corsair dominator fan cooling days and then i love the way it just clips on like that also this cover on the top to take off your eight pins i think that's cool as well and then that ignition button never seen that really innovative there to just put all your uh water cooling loop together so if you'd like to see a build on this then do let me know i could try and get it back for that i think i've got everything we would need for a water cooling loop so we could try that button out in actual you know real circumstances so if you'd like to see that let me know we could uh, see what we can do there but I will leave the links to this in the description box below if you're bored enough to need one of these. Hope you've enjoyed this video though. Let me know your thoughts about the board down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Gigabyte for sending this out for me to look at. And I'll see you all in the next one.